note of this that it has nucleoid circular double stranded dna and also the non histone proteins next we will be moving on to the, the cattles that's why they are called ruminococcus and that is one of the reasons that cattle release methane gas so they are surviving under high temperature and highly acidic condition so that is in the bedrock region so what happens is from that region as we know the temperature travels from the higher temperature to the lower temperature <music> Hello students welcome to Allen Digital in today's video we will be learning about one of the oldest living fossil which is archaea bacteria now we know that archaea bacteria has been kept under kingdom monera as per rh whitaker's five kingdom classification archaea bacteria archaea primitive these are one of the most primitive organisms on earth they are also the oldest living fossil group of ancient bacteria and it is the oldest living fossil why is it the oldest living fossil or why is it called the group of ancient bacteria these organisms have evolved at the time where the earth had anaerobic conditions they were the first organisms to utilize the solar energy for their own purpose so that's why they are group of oldest living fossil and also mostly anaerobic in nature now many a times for archaea bacteria we also use a term called extremophile extremo extremo extreme file philic loving they live under extremes of the conditions such as highly saline condition highly acidic condition hence they are called extremo files now here you can see that they have been categorized into methanogens halophiles and thermoacidophiles let us now learn about each of them now <clears throat> before moving on to the classification we have to first understand the cell structure as i discussed that they are extremophiles they survive under the extremes of the environmental condition that means definitely the cell has structures which is enabling the archaea bacteria to survive under harsh condition so one of that structure is its cell wall its cell wall is composed of complex polysaccharide and polypeptide the cell wall of archaea bacteria is composed of pseudomurin or we also call it pseudo peptidoglycan so it is either pseudomurin or pseudopeptidoglycan which enables it to survive under the harsh condition so that is the cell wall of the archaea bacteria let us now move on to its cell membrane we will also study about that how cell membrane and its modification has helped the bacteria to survive under harsh condition now if you notice here its genetic material it is double stranded circular dna now the dna has the coiling super coiling so that it will enable the archaea bacteria to survive under harsh condition it contains the prokaryotic cytoplasm the moment we use the term prokaryotic cytoplasm it means that the membrane bound cell organelles are absent and it has 70s ribosome it also contain the inclusion bodies such as the reserve bodies or the waste substances all right now make note of this that it has nucleoid circular double stranded dna and also the non histone proteins next we will be moving on to the cell membrane of the archaea bacteria as discussed 
I said that they survive under the harsh condition. So to survive under the harsh condition, remember the cell wall is composed of pseudomurin or pseudopeptidoglycan. The DNA has supercoiling so that it will survive under the harsh condition. The proteins will be highly folded protein. It's a simple concept that if the proteins are highly folded, the more energy will be required to denature them. So that's why they are able to survive under harsh condition. Next is its cell membrane. They have this structure of the cell membrane wherein the phospholipid will be having the branched fatty acid chain and here you will observe the ester linkage which is seen in case of other bacteria and eukaryotes but here there is ether linkage. Got it? Clear? Here you have the ether linkage. So in the cell membrane ether linkage and the branched fatty acid chain allows it to survive under the harsh condition. Keep that in mind ester linkage we see in case of bacteria and the other eukaryotes. See here phospholipids of eukaryotes and the other prokaryote uh, have ester linkage and unbranched fatty acid chain but here the fatty acid chain is branched and you have the ether linkage to survive under the harsh condition. Now let us move on to the methanogen. As the name suggests, methanogen generating methane, methane generating organism. These are the methane producing bacteria. So naturally you will find them in the marshy areas in the gober gas fermenter, the marsh gas, gober gas fermenter and in the rumen of the cattle. So you are aware that when we take the cow dung and we anaerobically digest it, there is the gas which is collected used in the cooking. So that is nothing but the gober gas. What is that gas? Methane produced by methanogens. Why? Because the cattle dung, the cow dung already has these bacteria in its dung. So they will anaerobically ferment it to release the methane gas. Now you can see here, you also find them in the areas where the organic matter is converted into acetate and CO2 and these CO2 by the methanogenic bacteria will be converted into methane in the marshy regions. So see here, not only when they are present in the animal dung, they are converting it into gas form. They are capable of converting the CO2 into the methane in the marshy region. They are also present in the rumen of cattle. Cattle, what is their nutrition? They are herbivores. They have a lot of cellulose in them. How is that cellulose digested? Those cellulose are digested by these methanogenic bacteria in the rumen of the cattle. That's why they are called ruminococcus. And that is one of the reasons that cattle release methane gas. Remember this, okay? In the marshy area, they convert CO2 into methane and inside the rumen of the cattle, they convert the cellulose into methane. So same bacteria, if you see them in the marshy area, it is called methanobacterium and the same methanogen, when you find them in the rumen of the cattle, you call them ruminococcus. You call them ruminococcus. Next, we have here halophile. Halo means saline, salty. Philic means loving. These are found in extreme salty area, 20% weight by volume salt concentration. Halophile, example halobacterium. So pay attention here, what happens is that these are present in the extreme salty regions like, you must have heard about the Dead Sea, that nothing can uh, you know survive there. These halophilic archibacteria are present there. All right, so see the structure of this bacteria here. It has cell membrane surrounded by the cell wall. All right, it is its genetic material which is called the nucleoid. Now here, if you notice, there is a pigment, this structure. 
this pigment bacteriorhodopsin bacteriorhodopsin these halophilic bacteria what they do is they trap the sunlight bacteriorhodopsin is the pigment rhodopsin pigment present in the cell membrane of the halophilic bacteria they trap the sunlight and that is utilized to pull the protons from the bacterial cytoplasm into this periplasmic space from there they come out through the atp pump which converts the adp and inorganic phosphate into atp so see here what's happening basically usually whenever we talk about the autotrophic nutrition we say that the solar energy is trapped and glucose is formed later during the process of cellular respiration the glucose gives rise to the energy but here you see what's happening the solar energy is trapped these bacterial rhodopsin pigments are trapping the solar energy and utilizing that energy to pull the protons from the cytoplasm into the periplasmic space and from here these protons again come out through these proteins where in the atp synthase enzyme will convert the adp and inorganic phosphate into atp so there is direct trapment of the solar energy and conversion into atp they are not forming glucose keep that in mind they are directly forming the atp so that is the halophile here all right clear so halophile example halobacterium next we have here the thermoacidophile as the name suggests thermoacidophile thermo temperature high temperature and high acid loving organism these archaea bacteria survive in the region where there is high temperature as well as the acidic medium such as in the natural geyser hot springs sulfur springs so basically the concept here is try to understand this that these are growing in the region where underneath the water body the bedrock region has a lot of sulfur so they convert that sulfur into sulfuric acid underneath sulfuric acid a concentrated sulfuric acid is quite hot so the nature is acidic these are in that acidic condition underneath the bedrock these are in that acidic condition all right sulfuric acid the ph is going to be 2 to 3 ph and a freshly you know prepared uh, sulfuric acid if you know about it that it is highly hot so they are surviving under high temperature and highly acidic condition so that is in the bedrock region so what happens is from that region as we know the temperature travels from the higher temperature to the lower temperature from the region bedrock region that temperature will come up to the water body heating up the water body that's why they are called hot sulfur springs the water body will be hot warm why because of the temperature okay clear got it these are organisms which require 80 to 100 degree celsius and low ph of 2 example sulfolobus all right one of this archaea bacteria thermus aquaticus it is its polymerase tac polymerase is used in the polymerase chain reaction for the amplification of dna got it so this is about the thermoacidophile surviving under high temperature and highly acidic environment thank you